Huh. It's kind of weird how TTRPGs in the 2000s were actually pretty decent. Not necessarily great, and I've seen some terrible ones, but it's just surprising how good some of these are. Are you reviewing a good one today? I actually don't know yet. You see, I tend to write these things as I'm going over the game, that way my reaction is a bit more genuine for these videos. So, what you were viewing? A game from 2006, RunePunk, which may have some later editions, I don't know, I tend to find out there's multiple editions while I'm in the editing room, so we'll find out. So, this book actually has already made me happy. If you've seen my video of me bitching about book formatting, I can say this book actually does a fantastic job of placing most everything. In the beginning of the book, there's a few short pages about what the world is like, which I'd normally recommend be in the back, but it's still condensed together, including a map and a few other things. There's a bit about the types of games this system is made for, and how the system works. At least it actually tells you and I don't need to hunt through the book to find this stuff or look at a YouTube video for answers. There's obviously more, but fairly early into the book it actually gives you step by step on how to make a character. It's fairly simple to understand and actually tells you what various things actually change. First is it tells you to choose a race. We'll get into that in a minute. Each race has different racial and professional edges, which we'll also step into. It also says to go through and pick your favorite- Wait! This is a Savage Worlds game? I already did a glowing review of this, fantastic! Okay, now, for this setting, you need to pick your place of birth, and this does change some things from specific districts of the city to the barons or whatever have you. This stuff will change your common knowledge skills and is told about in the setting rules section, which we actually passed to get here. Then you go into traits, which is like other Savage World games. You got five that all start at a d4 and you'll get five points to spread around. Each point increases the die size by one, so four becomes d6, a d6 to a d8, a d8 to d10, and so such. But you can only bring them up to a d12, except with certain edges. Now, we go into languages, which depend on your race, and gives you a default language of sprawl. Nothing really to add to this. Then come secondary statistics, pace is your movement, you can move 6 inches per round, parry is 2 plus 1 half your fighting skill, charisma is a combination of your character's appearance, manner, and general likability, it's added to persuasion and streetwise roles, the GM can also make decisions on how an NPC will see you, there's more to this one, too. Toughness is equal to 2 plus half your vigor. Next up is special abilities. You can decide to take some hindrances, which are negatives you can take to gain extra benefits. I always liked the flaw systems like this because it promotes an imperfect character. You can take up to 4 points worth of hindrances, and spend those points to gain other things. Major hindrances are worth 2 points each, while minor 1 point each. For 2 points, you can raise an attribute die or choose an edge to gain. For 1 point, you can gain another skill point or gain an additional amount of cash equal to your starting funds. And speaking of starting funds, you start with 500 bucks or royals in this world, and the clothes covering your god-given parts. You can spend your cash on weapons, armor, and other such gear. 
this will likely take the vast majority of your character creation stuff. Then comes the background, which looks like it's more of a story writing thing. It doesn't really require a background, but it does ask you to in order to make your GM's job easier. Now, it goes into details on various things like how the game works and what can easily be changed. Then it goes into various races of the setting. The Antari are one that look like ghostly humans with some magical capabilities and such. They also get some hindrances too, essentially making it difficult to use certain things because of their ghostly visage. There's also a rat race too, which is... It's Skaven. Look, it's essentially a small, clawful, and good in the dark. There's a bunch of these races to go through. Humans are humans, nothing really I can tell you, They, they though they don't gain any innate hindrances, which is kind of weird. Normally, humans have no positives or negatives about them, but makes them insanely customizable. Malakar seem to be hell-like beasts, though a rough upbringing that makes them tough and capable of using the shadows to their advantage. Honestly, this game comes off as a lot of edgy. Overwrought are essentially cyborgs, or rather, machines with brains and flesh put into them to make them more human? Possibly both? It seems they mix both the machine and human aspects of themselves to create their names, at least, but they're absolutely massive tank busters with fists of iron and hearts of steel. Next part goes into high laws, the common knowledge, and the expanded skills for the game from the Savage Worlds core system. This game takes place in a sort of apocalyptic science fiction fantasy with melee warriors, guns, robots, and magic, though normally in the form of rune magic. Now, the common knowledge, I don't think that's a sort of skill. I think it's just a bare statement of what you would know because you're from Area X. I don't mind this. Sometimes asking for a role on something is kind of stupid, but there's never really a list as to what you should know about the world, you know what I mean? Of course, there are still knowledge skills. Two new ones are the chemistry and rune lore knowledge skills. I can understand it. The best I know about chemistry is how to cook or how to make explosives. Did I say that out loud? There's also new hindrances and edges, which I won't go on to because this video is long enough. Now, I'm not going to give this game a score because I technically already did. Though, assume I'm going to give this one a slightly higher score because I absolutely love sci-fi fantasy settings. Now, I should probably say something. I have to prepare my video for next week immediately because I'm about to go to my baby sister's wedding and before that, I have the Warhammer 40k competition on Saturday. So, uh, have fun and, uh, Shove off.